Hi, welcome to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers, and today we're taking a look and daring a taste of Atomic Foods. All those fire-breathing snacks we can't resist. And a lot of the hot stuff out there is made from these. They're chili peppers. In fact, there are over 150 varieties of chili peppers grown today in the U.S. alone. And one place is keeping track and testing them all. So get a glass of water because it's time for a visit to the Chili Pepper Institute. Really, watch. There's the early jalapeno, the habanero, and the New Mex piñata, all part of the chili pepper family. And while they're made to be eaten, a group of researchers in Las Cruces, New Mexico, is studying them as well. Chili Pepper Institute, this is Denise. The Chili Pepper Institute is a research institute in the College of Agriculture and Home Economics at New Mexico State University. We have more than 23, 25 faculty members doing aspects of chili research, anything from economics to disease resistance to breeding new types. Since 1991, researchers have poked and prodded everything from jalapenos to habaneros, and today they have grown more than 150 varieties of chilies to help them learn more about peppers and their continuing evolution. This particular habanero is something that happened in nature, um, kind of on its own, and uh, we thought it was really cool. It looks like a regular habanero. It smells like a regular habanero. It just doesn't have that, that punch of heat. Nature does genetically change peppers over time, but researchers at the Institute also try and speed up the process through science. The greenhouse, what we use here is to do controlled hybridizations uh, to try to cross different types of chilies to, to make, you know, new types. What we're doing is we, we pick two plants that have desirable traits and we pick a mother plant and a father plant. The mother plant is the one that gets the pollen. The father plant is the plant that takes the pollen. And the trick to spreading that pollen comes from Mother Nature itself. We go to the flower and try to get some of that pollen off of the anthers there onto the bee. And then you go to your what is going to be your mother plant and you pollinate your stigma with the pollen from the other flower. The scientists also work to include completely different vegetables into the hybridization process with some interesting results. What we have here is a, a chili grafted onto the tomato rootstock because the tomato has disease resistance that the chili doesn't. And so now we have the root resistances from the tomato and then the chili fruits up on top. Humans aren't the only species that have helped the chili pepper evolve. The very first wild peppers to grow thousands of years ago are called bird peppers, with good reason. Birds and chilies have kind of evolved a special relationship. Birds do not have the receptors to feel pungency, so they can eat lots and lots of these little guys. The other really interesting thing is birds' digestive system don't harm the seeds at all, so they can pass the seeds, disperse them, and they'll grow into new plants in the wild. And when it comes to measuring the heat of peppers, they use more than just their taste buds. When we do the um, uh, HPLC or the high performance liquid chromatography, we, we concentrate it down. We do an extraction out of the, the chili powder. So it is a very concentrated uh, uh, compound. The results help determine a measurement known in the hot food world as the Scoville unit for the chili. So if you have something with 100,000 Scoville heat units, it means that if you dilute it 100,000 to 1, you won't taste any heat. And while the researchers at the Chili Pepper Institute may be experts on chilies, it doesn't automatically mean they're heat seekers. I was born and raised on New Mexican chilies, so I'm not a real big fan of the flavor of habaneros. It's definitely the kind of heat that knocks your socks off. Just try one, we dare you. There is a way to tell what kind of pepper you're putting in your mouth. It depends on where you feel the heat. Jalapenos get you in the front while habaneros hit you in the back of the mouth and throat.